do you want to be when you're older? I'll be. Ella Gregson is one of 7% of children in the UK living with a disability. Her syndrome, CAT6A, causes developmental delay, speech and language issues, plus seizures and heart defects are also common. She's a diva. She's all, oh, everybody knows her. So she's got a wicked personality. And even though she can't talk very much, she gets herself understood. Yeah, go on, three, two, one. Whee! Are you in the mouth? No. You? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Six. I think one. Two. She was disabled at birth. When she was delivered, she wasn't breathing. The doctors knew then there was something different about Ella, but it took until she was 14 for us to find out what it was. <laughs> Who's going first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me or you? Me? Oh, thank you. Right. Well, I think I'm going to go for the dragon. Can you put yeah. it down there? Thank you. Yeah. The concerns I have for Ella's future. Oh my goodness, where do we start? <laughs> what will she do when school's finished? Because she's only at school until she's 19. And um, what will she do for her days? How will people treat her as an adult? And the biggie is what happens to her when we can't look after her anymore ourselves. Like that dance. Yeah. Look at that, you're watching. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you like watching it, don't you? Ella's had lots of problems at school, mainstream primary school. She was basically kept away from the rest of the class because they were getting ready for the SATs, and Ella's never going to do SATs. So it was basically her and a teaching assistant on their own for most of the time. Ella is now 15 and has only three years left at her specialist school, which is one of the only places that caters for her specialist educational needs. We were so pleased when Ella went to Broadfield. We've noticed her learning has picked up, her speech has picked up, her behaviour. There's a lot less violent episodes from her now than there used to be. She has friends, she sees friends out of school which has never happened before. She gets invited to parties and things like that, and that never happened before Broadfield. At a specialist school, it's much better for children that need extra support because we have smaller classes, so they get the extra one-to-one -one that they need. In mainstream schools, they're so much bigger, and children can get lost, and they don't get the extra support. Can you remember what we're doing on Friday morning? Morning. 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 Dancing. We are aren't we? <laughs> Although 3.4 million disabled adults are in employment, disabled people are twice as likely to be unemployed as non-disabled people. The independent living space at Broadfield is quite new and Elle was really lucky that she was in the group that got it ready. We're coming to the independent living area so then the children can learn the skills to get a level of independence for when they leave school and maybe move into the community. Right, hello Charlotte and Ella. Hi. Right, so today we're going to be doing some toast yeah. and some juice. Yeah. Okay? So what do we need to do first of all? Brilliant stuff. When these children leave school, they're not going to walk into a job just like, like you or I would. Uh, they're going to find it quite hard, like for example, Ella with, with signing, um, you know, she'd need to go somewhere that, that people are going to understand her signing, uh, which doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily happen, does it really? So let's do this then, let's right. get everything out yeah. and let's set the table ready, okay? Right. Pop them onto the table. It is getting her ready for things like, um, I know they make beds and they practice making food and drinks. Right, so who's doing who's doing what job? Me. Yeah. You're pouring the juice yeah, and Charlotte's yeah, going to do the buttering. Okay. And I've now discovered she can hoover, which we will be making use of at home because we didn't know. <laughs> can you see it there? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. 
as a parent, you always worry about your children, but we've been worrying about Ella being an adult from her being very young. We've recently extended the house so she can stay with us as an adult. And your new bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Wow. I know your wardrobe's coming. Oh. That feel nice. Yeah, um, yeah. Man. This is the brand new bathroom, oh, isn't no, it? You love it in here, don't you? So we've had this bathroom built bigger, so there's more floor space because there's always somebody needs to be in with Ella in the bathroom because she can slip and she's if she has a seizure she just can't ever be on her own. But this one will help her just walk into the shower as before the old one she had to step in so she couldn't get herself in and out of the shower so now you can be a bit more independent and again this is a wider bath for her so she can get herself in and out the care network is a charity which helps direct people with disabilities to services that are not provided by the council carol ward works on the disability partnership board she is worried about the effects that cuts are having on disabled adults Care Network is primarily a charity. We are very heavily commissioned by local authority. We provide services that the local authority are struggling to provide due to the health and social care cuts. Unlike the children's department, adult social care has had to make budget cuts amounting to 26% over the last four years. The equivalent of three and a half billion pounds. The government doesn't do enough to support disabled people. I think they talk a lot about it. I go to a lot of meetings where people talk a lot about it. But the reality is, is that there's probably less support now for disabled people than what there was maybe 20 years ago. People have been receiving support in terms of, I don't necessarily mean just financial, but maybe they had a practical support by having a carer providing support to them maybe four days a week. What's happened is that that, cut, that service has been cut, so maybe they're down to maybe two days a week or two hours a day. Uh, I mean, really drastic cuts in service. These cuts have led to the majority of disabled children in Britain being left with no prospects after leaving school. She needs things to fill her days. Um, so for Ella, because years ago they would have all gone, there would have been day centres but they've all been closed because they feel like people should be in the community, which is correct. But then how many people do we see walking around town just shopping with the PAs, the personal assistants? That's not beneficial, that's not constructive, and Ella, I don't want that for Ella. We almost babysit people in this building um, five days a week because they don't know where to go and there's nothing to do. It's fine when you've, when you've got a child because someone's looking out for you and you've got all the services around you to make sure that the child's fine. Once they get to the age of 18, become an adult and they haven't got that support team around them anymore. For children like Ella, it's down to the parents to make sacrifices to put their children's needs first. I need that rug hoop for yeah. 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 Many parents don't feel there's a choice and because they want to protect them, they will be left looking after their children into old age. There is no work available for them. There is, they do what not saying they don't want to work, they all want to work, but employers have got no incentives to take them on. Ella often goes horse riding with her grandma and dad on the family horse, which is helping with her development. When Ella leaves school, if you were to ask Ella, it would be to go and work with horses. That's what she loves. I've really enjoyed seeing that the build-up of the experiences that she's had have, have built such a lot of confidence in her and independence. So that's 
That's great for Ellie because she finds it difficult to express how she's feeling and she shows it with the ponies without, uh, without words really. <laughs> yes. Turn and I don't want to go in in shared living. That's just not for Ella because even when she's in her 20s, 30s, 40s, she's still going to be like a four or a five year old. So she needs to be with a family. And so that future, she stays with us as long as we can. And then hopefully we can find somewhere suitable that's more family based when we can't look after her anymore. People all work in little sort of islands and nobody does everything together. So you get children's services that don't talk to adult services, you get schools that don't talk to GPs, hospitals that don't talk to GPs either, believe it or not. And then, and none of, because none of those people talk to each other, it's so easy for children to fall off the radar. And especially if they're being cared for at home by parents, which understandably the parents want to protect the child, but what happens when something happens to those parents? We are supposed to look after our most vulnerable in society. That's what I think our taxes are for. And Ella will be, as an adult, one of the most vulnerable people in society. So I think she should be cared for. <laughs> <laughs>